Welcome to Outside the Fame. I'm Jamie Parker. It's been a long road trip to get here in the region that's known as the Northeast Kingdom. It's just miles from the Canadian border. It's called Craftsbury, Vermont. Population 1,000. One of those thousand is Bill Spaceman Lee. The former Red Sox pitcher is now about 72 years old and he still leads a very active lifestyle with travel, still plays a little ball, and believe it or not, he makes baseball bats. Baseball fans of a certain age know all about Bill Spaceman Lee. He pitched 10 seasons for the Red Sox and was a big part of the 1975 World Series team that fell to the Reds in seven games. He was also a controversial figure, whether it was feuding with his manager, enjoying his off-field life, or providing colorful quotes that led to his nickname. Today in his 70s, he is just as active as his younger days and still plays baseball. He also makes baseball bats with the wood coming from his land in Craftsbury, Vermont where I spent some time with him recently. Everything over that ridge goes downhill into Boston. Okay. Everything on this side flows north into Canada. Right. And my heart's in Dixie, <laughs> but my head's in the cool, cool north. <laughs> but it's funny that you would end up here. I mean, you're a California kid growing up, right? And so you yeah. end up in Vermont. I chased my lineage back to Bennington, Vermont. Bennington, Vermont. Jonathan Hunt was the first lieutenant governor in the state of Vermont, was my great, 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 great uncle. Wow. So I ran for governor. Yes, you did. And that was why, because Jonathan. <laughs> you got a lot of votes. Jonathan was a sheriff, and he, is, he was locked up in New York, escaped, and we've been fighting the New Yorkers ever since, <laughs> and we've been kicking their butts since 04. The Northeast Kingdom is where you'll find huge forests of maple trees used to make bats. Those are all giant maples, there's bats in there. This is a whole stand of maples that will be harvested probably in the next three or four years. Tell me what you're looking for when you're going around your property and looking for a tree to cut down. I'm looking for a tree that's probably 14 inches at the butt to 17 inches so I can get wood out of it. And the key is it can't have sap line on it, which means it's been tapped for a maple tree <laughs> and it's full of holes. So bat making, Bill, I want to know when you actually got started in this. Probably when I was three years old. My grandfather had a bat in my hand. My aunt played. My dad played. Uh, we would go out to the LA River and I would catch frogs and they would play ball. And I had a bat in my hand my whole life. I wanted to be a hitter and then my eyesight went and I became a pitcher. And then I got my eyesight corrected and I became a hitter again and I started making bats. My first bat professionally I made was in New Brunswick, Canada. It was the old bat company. I named it after all my ex-wives and it was, it was perfect. Why though? Why start it? I just didn't like the two who were Adirondack and uh, Louisville Slugger and I thought we should you know, diversify and make mm -hmm. smaller. And I was in Canada and we had a giant forest behind our hill there. And I had a woodworker and uh, Stevie Vale, mm -hmm. good friend of mine said, let's start making bats. And we got a backer and we got the province of New Brunswick and we started making yellow birch. We were the first to make yellow birch bats. And now the B245 company is out of, uh, out of Quebec, right up here in Champeau territory. Mm -hmm and all of our wood goes to Canada. And I said, halt, stop, let's make the bats right here. So I started uh, making good wood ink and I've been making bats for Louis Ledoux, for Nakona and Axis. And uh, the bats I make won the home run hitting contest three years in a row. The best bats made are by Louis Ledoux in Fall River. And you heard it right here on Roller Derby. <laughs> Roller Derby. <laughs> Coming up on Outside the Fame, no, it's not roller derby, but an up-close look on how a big maple tree becomes a beautiful maple bat. Outside the Fame is presented by Scholar Athletes, supporting academic achievement through athletics.
I've been involved in the zone for the past two years. It's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it basically by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. Most people have a skitter, but this is just old-fashioned leverage with a PB. <laughs> Takes the park off too a little bit. You just want to get all the gravel off of it. The legend of Bill Spaceman Lee just continues to grow. There have been songs written about him, movies made about his life, and there is even a Spaceman wine. But it was baseball and bats that Bill wanted to talk about most. This is the logo from the wine mm -hmm. and from Josh Dumal when we made the movie Spaceman. And we put it on there. My son designed that, Saturn with a baseball around mm -hmm. it. And you can see the svelted maple. This is a flaw, but it's a beautiful flaw. And they couldn't sell it. It would break probably. So I said, you take four of these, you put a slot right here, and you have a child's bed. And I go to Burlington Mayor. I said, you know, start manufacturing stuff here make your cutting boards here. We live in the largest arboreal forest mm -hmm. on the planet Earth. We're the last great hardwood florist and we're not taking care of it properly. We're not marketing it properly. We're not providing jobs properly. Keep the money in New England. This is Ash. That's the Axis Bat Company, that's us. And this is my first cantilevered or you know, counterbalance bat. Right. That but how can, you tell, how can you tell the difference between the woods? Tell me some of the... The grain. See the grain here? Yep. See how wide it is? And, and maple is really, really tight. See yeah, this slow growing group, tree. Yeah. And it has a pearl line. That's called the pearl line. And that'll come out when we cut it. You'll see it. And this is the first yellow birch bat ever made. And I made it. And that's the knot that we like to keep right in the hitting area. That's the hardest mm -hmm. part of the wood. And if you get a knot, Yastrzemski would just, he'd go through all the pitcher's bats. And if he found one with a knot right yeah. there, he'd steal it. He would. Oh, he'd steal it in a heartbeat. Bill was a hitter in college at USC and knows all about the subject. No two bats are the same. No two swings are the same. In the old days, we used to choke up to shorten the bat because we would be hitting it down here on the handle. Mm -hmm. And you want to, by choking up, you've taken the redistributed the weight, you put weight below your hands. So I developed the big knob bat, which put weight for young children to swing properly. You cannot swing a heavy bat improperly. A heavy bat, you have to bring your hands in and you got to get your hands through the ball. The bat head drags and that's what developed a good swing. All of a sudden, we started making aluminum bats, which were minus 12, minus 13, which little leaguers use. Mm -hmm. So you developed a bad swing. And that's what's wrong with baseball today, is the designated hitter and aluminum bats. If every kid went back to swinging a wood bat, they'd all be Yogi Berra. They would only strike out 40 times in a year, not 120, 160. And it's the design of the bat which will save baseball. So I look for trees that grow straight, fast growing, get a lot of sunlight. I harvest those and they make the best bats. That's how you start out. Mm -hmm. And then it's a long process. People, oh, a bat, why does it cost so much? Well, there's a lot of craftsmanship in it. As we discovered when we went out with this crew to harvest the trees. Okay, we're gonna get loud now. We're gonna get loud. And we're gonna take this bark off. We're gonna make a three by three cant and I'm gonna cut it and then we're gonna dry it and eventually in about a half a year, it'll be a bat. Stay with us on Outside the Fame to see if we can or can't make those cans.
I've been involved in the zone for the past two years. And it's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it basically by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. Scholar Athletes, founded by Suffolk Construction Chairman and CEO John Fish, partners with public high schools to help close the opportunity gap for thousands of students in grades 9 through 12 across the Commonwealth. Scholar Athlete programs support success in school, as well as success in life. Today we introduce Fauzi Talabe, a Scholar Athlete Program Coordinator from Brewster, Mass. So I'm located at Boston International Newcomers Academy, Binka. Almost every single one of our students, their first language is not English. So it's a really cool dynamic because they're trying to assimilate to the culture here, but we want to make sure that they don't lose some of that culture that they brought from back home. My roles vary, but I like to see it as more as a mentorship. Anything that happens back at home, we try to support them the best that we can but also trying to like teach them life values and life lessons. It's taught me to be accepting and it's taught me to get out of my comfort zone. So the athletics at Binka is amazing. Both the soccer programs stand out. They both make it to the city semifinals or the city finals every year. The language barrier is a little bit of a challenge from time to time, but I think that athletics ties it all in. Whenever you're on a sports team, you gotta work together regardless of differences and cultural background. Every day there's a new story that you can tell. Last year I worked with a young female. She was not that confident. She struggled communicating to adults. But as we worked together longer throughout the year, it was just a 180 degree change. She's so confident now. She actually spoke at our gala and she sang. So it was a really cool experience for me to see that. In sawmill terms, a cant is a piece of wood usually cut on at least three sides. Once we finish here, these cants will be sent to the Axe's Back Company in Fall River, Mass. Oh, nice! One bat done! That's I one mean, bat. I mean, that's not looking like a that's bat. That's a cant. It's a cant. It's a cant because you can't hit with it. <laughs> then you bring the next one through. Okay. And we measure again, right? Measure again. Measure again. Measure twice, cut once. That's the old carpenter saying. Okay. Okay. Let's watch out. That's it. Grab her there Ready? and pull her down. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Good. Two. Well, this is actually Let's fun. see what this one is. See if it's perfect size. Is that amazing? I did it for Look at how beautiful job. that is. I'm going to have to quit my day job. I'm telling you. Look at that. Why do you smell it? Light. Why did you smell it? It's, it's just, it's, it's fresh maple. It's <laughs> maple syrup. Think of this. This tree gives you pancakes and, and doubles, doubles in the gap. gap. <laughs> Hitting them taters. Greenwood, Mississippi. <laughs> the boomer. <laughs> Seems like as good a time as ever to talk to Bill about his Red Sox days, which began in 1969. 10 years in a Red Sox uniform. Just talk about some of your best memories. Finding the ballpark. <laughs> Coming in from Pittsfield in my 62 Chevy, you know, uh, fill it up with oil, check the gas. I got off, I took, said take a right and a right, the ballpark's right there. I drove right by it and I ended up in Cambridge. And then I come back over the bridge and the ballpark's right there and I turn up over there and I end up by Boston College. I'm going, <laughs> what, where do the streets go around here? So I parked the car, I got there and I end up pitching the same day I got there. I, I threw five and two thirds innings. You know, Dick Williams loved me. He saw my pointed shoes. He took me across the river to spot built on there and got me some new pair of shoes and uh, you know, and then the organization said, don't unpack your bags. You're not going to stay here that long, you know? And I ended mm. up staying for 10 years. Yeah. So when you get your foot in the door, keep it in there. Keep it open and uh, you only get one first impression and uh, make it a good one. And I got to pitch all the way up and down the line. And my problem was I couldn't say no and I wouldn't shut my mouth. My dad said, you're Irish, you're Catholic, you drink a lot, 
you know, you'll go far. Just be quiet. You know, and I said, well, three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> so. um, the Red Sox also inducted you into their Hall of Fame. What, what, how special was that for you? It was anticlimactic in a way because they took Bruce Hurst ahead of me, and I had more wins than him. I had a one-point lower ERA. I love Bruce Hurst. Don't get me wrong, you know. It's only because he's H and you're L. Yeah, and I <laughs> well, that's not why they brought him <laughs> no, in there. It's because he was a he was a nice guy, and I was a, a political rabble rouser who worked for Fair Share, the Clamshell Alliance, the Abbott Aloni Alliance. You know, I worked against Massachusetts Commission against handguns. I. Uh, you know, I was kissing babies and, you know, stealing candy, you know, and uh, I ran for governor, ran for president of the United States in 88 under the rhinoceros party. Mm -hmm. And I only would take the votes of convicted felons. <laughs> that didn't go far. You, I was going to say, you ended up getting a lot of votes, though. I did. I got a lot of votes. I got a lot of votes up here. At, uh, you know, uh, I'm like Charles Barkley. I may be wrong, but I doubt it. Up on Outside the Fame, more bat making and more Bill Spaceman Lee. doesn't always deliver the wood to Axis Bat Company himself, but today he wanted to personally show us how to make one. You see the grain kind of curls this way, and down here it's straight. So this is going to be your handle, that's going to be your barrel. It's two ounces too heavy. Thing you dip them to seal them. Take it out slow. Let it drip. And that bat's ready to be labeled. Lay it down just like that. Close it up. We send it out. Two days, they got themselves a bat. Or if they come to play the Red Sox, they can drive right down here. We have free shuttle service. It's not Uber, but it's close. I know a lot of these bats have gone to special places. Tell us oh, about yeah. Cuba, these. Bahamas, the Bahamians. Uh, I make all the bats for all the islands, the people that really need the product. They don't have wood. They don't have anything. Mm -hmm. They're getting all leftover aluminum. But those Cuban guys are swinging those old East and aluminums that are like 38 ounces, and the 12-year-olds are swinging them, and they all have great swings. Look at Twig. Look at all the guys, the islanders that come off there. Talk about your family life. I want to know all the extended family in oh, your. Oh wow! You got a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got grandkids. I was talking to them yesterday. They're all mm -hmm. playing ball. My kids all played. You know, my son played pro ball. He's a head coach at LSU Eunice, number one fast pitch coach in women's fast pitch softball. My daughter graduated summa cum laude from the Georgia University of Georgia system. Mm. You know, my other boys at Gonzaga, he's a coach. My two grandsons are high school coaches. Uh, I could put 11 Lees on the field, you know. And uh, my granddaughter uh, is probably the best athlete. She's a, a fast pitch catcher and catches in 90 degree mm -hmm. heat. She's a, she's a gym. They're all, the key is I drink and they don't. And oh, that is the key. <laughs> so I set an example. That's that good. They the apple didn't fall. <laughs> the apple didn't, right. it didn't exactly fall. It's still fall. on the tree. I'm very lucky. But I have the greatest genes in the world. How many kids? How many grandchildren? Good question. Uh, I got, <laughs> I got two, That's two, the most difficult four, question yeah, I, I got, asked I got, you so yeah, far. Two, I got five grandchildren. Six? <laughs> I love how I Diane is saying I six. Don't, in freaking, I don't have a clue. I got, I got Hunter. Kasdan, uh, Logan, Elena, the two boys. Yeah, I got okay, six. Okay, six. That makes six, yeah. That's six, yeah, and I got right. one that's not even producing yet, so uh, there'll be more. 
<laughs> we do have to talk about your active lifestyle. You still play ball here and there, right? You still yeah, do Yeah, I just your... play. 70 yeah. and over. It's not pretty. 70 and over. It is pretty, though. I mean, you can still do it. That's pretty. Yeah, I can, but everybody <laughs> else can't. <laughs> It's hard to watch these yeah. guys to run around. I can slide. I can pop up slide. Mm -hmm. I'm flexible. I do yoga. I'm out logging. I'm hauling wood. Uh, I'm, I just keep playing because the phone rings and people ask me to play. Bill, will you mm -hmm. play on this team? You play on that team. Now I'm finding out because I'm on early onset or whatever I've got, I'm signing up and disappointing people because I'm playing on too many teams. Hmm. And I can't keep everybody happy, so I'm basically retiring after this year. I'm uh, combining Sikorsky helicopter and Airstream trailer. I'm starting my own business. It's called uh, Pick Up and Drop Off. We <laughs> take your Airstream, we take it out in the mountains, and we drop you off. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run away into the woods and live in my Airstream trailer <laughs> on the middle of the Fraser or Thompson River where they filmed the shooter with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of films, there was also a film made about you recently, Josh Dumo, who played uh, you. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts on being uh, the, the character in a movie? Well, the funny thing is Woody Harrelson had the rights and Woody wanted to play me. He says, Bill, I want to play you in the worst way. I said, it would be the worst way. You're bald and right-handed. <laughs> But Josh Duhamel is a good-looking guy. Josh Duhamel is a good-looking guy. He's a good-looking guy. Yeah, he's a good-looking yeah, guy. Yeah, he was good, and his wife was Fergie, Stacy Ferguson. Yeah. And Were you on that set at all? I was on the set. Yeah. I did a cameo. I have a one-word, uh, I say the word tabernac, which is a French swear word, oh. in the background of one of the closing scenes, and it's uh, pretty cute. <laughs> it's pretty and cute. the funny thing is that movie was filmed in L.A. on my old Little League diamond. What? And I'm going, how did Brett pick that across the L.A. River outside of Burbank, where I was born and raised? It's supposed to be huh. Longay, Quebec, not even close to Longay, Quebec. But it's a cute little movie, and it's pretty representative of uh, the way I lived my life back in the uh, good old days. I don't see you slowing down. I know you say, like, you're going to slow down. I don't see it happening. Well, I just pulled a muscle sitting here with you. <laughs> And there, either that or it was a hunger pain. Well, you were like, sh <laughs> you were like sharpening tools oh, no. and uh, yeah. It's like I was moving stuff. I'm always moving, and I sitting still this long in front of a camera, is pretty tough for me. But uh, I'll get over it. So, Bill, all your knowledge about bat making and wine making and writing books and stuff, I just want you to say you have enlightened me. I'm th I'm glad that you put me to work today. I appreciate that. I did my workout for today. I'm feeling good. I just want to thank you for all your time today and taking me through the tree to bat process. Thank you, it's uh, lighten your load in Winslow, Arizona. Such a fine sight to see. That's a girl <laughs> in her black red floors, so I'm down to take a look at me. You're supposed to sing it. Take it easy. Sing. <laughs> <laughs>